Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make tiny improvements to your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon. Hello and welcome to this episode. It has officially been a year since I moved homes, which gave me a balloon shop, and I bought my van. So I thought this would be a fun one-year update episode on how having a designated balloon space and a transit van has changed my business, and it has been pretty significant. So I will get into all the details um, right after this quick break. Hey friends, I know you've heard about ballooncoach.com, but I wanted to take a second to talk about Balloon Boss Summit, which is the in-person event that happens every year in Florida in November. I've been for the past couple of years and I'll be returning again this year as an instructor. It's one of my favorite events because it gives me time and space to consider my business goals and network and learn from other balloon professionals all around the country. So check it out in the show notes where you're listening because there are only a few spots left. Okay, let's get right into it. So it has been a year since we sold our house and moved to a different house with a little shop attached to the front. And we did that fully knowing that it was going to be the balloon shop. Like I feel like I was that crazy person that moved her entire family for balloons. Um, And then in doing so, we actually were able to sell our house for more than the new house which left over a little bit of extra money and I was able to buy a transit van like all within the same month. So um, April and May of last year was a big month. We moved, we you know, bought a new house, I all of a sudden had a balloon shop, I all of a sudden had a balloon van and wasn't in debt over any of those things. Like I was able to do it like a domino effect. Um, And then it took some getting used to because it was all this space that I didn't have before and um, space in the van and I was able to deliver more and faster. And I just thought it would be an interesting episode to, to really talk about some of those concrete differences that it has made in my business. So first, let's start with the shop. Um, The most significant change that giving a designated spot for balloons has done for my business is that I now feel comfortable offering pickup orders. So before I was in like a traditional house in a neighborhood and I personally felt really weird about having people come to my home. Like I felt like it made my business seem more of like a side hustle and less of a business. So I really made it a point to not to not tell people I was home-based. I said that I was mobile um, because everything I did was on site. So I made it a point not to point out the fact that I didn't have a designated like warehouse or brick and mortar. Everything was in my home. Um, But now having this designated space, I actually have like a little parking lot. The balloon shop has a private entrance. It's like a little pink door. It's very cute. Um, So I feel a lot more comfortable having people come and pick up. However, I guess I I didn't really lean into that until recently. It took me probably like nine or 10 months before I really offered pickups because the shop just wasn't like ready. And I still would say it's not ready. It's not cute. Um, But I've started offering grab and go garland pickups on Thursday afternoons and I really love them. They are like a significant um, revenue stream now, but also it allows me to turn down business without turning it down. So the biggest advantage from the grab and go garlands is not like how much money I'm making, but it's all like extra money. It feels like free money because it's a Saturday job that I normally would have said no to, but instead I get them to purchase a grab and go garland instead. So on Thursdays I am in my shop. I don't have to go anywhere. They're all garlands, so they're easy to make. So I have really enjoyed having that pickup option. Um, The one thing that I didn't anticipate about having a storefront where people could come is like it needs to be presentable. So that is kind of the downside of offering pickups. Like Thursday is a hard time to have the shop look clean because I'm already getting ready for Friday, Saturday, Sunday events. Um, So that has been a struggle that like sometimes I'm a little bit late inflating for the weekend because I don't want to mess up the whole shop when I know a bunch of people are coming to pick up. Um, So the grab and go orders have been been good, um, but they also come with, they come with their downside. 
However, I do love having it not in my house and not only for pickups, but um, because they're not in my house because balloons aren't everywhere. So that is kind of like the second big perk of having a designated space. Like, I just love that there aren't balloons all over my house before I used to take over my basement. And that in itself was a struggle because I was downstairs. Um, getting a helium tank down there was impossible. So like those were often in my garage and it's winter, so it's always cold here. So helium was like a huge burden. Um, physically getting the balloons upstairs, they'd like snag on the railing and the banister. It was just like, it sucked. Um, but you know, you do what you have to do. And most of my inflating, most of what I did was on site. So it wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal, but having a designated space just to store all of my bases and my poles and um, have balloons everywhere and just be able to close the door and leave um, has been really, really nice. I know other people love having a, a warehouse or something not attached to their house for this reason. I personally do a lot of inflating like when my daughter is napping or when she goes to bed at like 7.30. I love inflating, watching TV and in my pajamas, like having a separate location would not work for me right now. So I love having it attached to my house, but totally separate. So that leads to another humongous advantage and that is having a private entrance. So you can get into the balloon shop without going through my house. Like it's it's a totally separate entrance. And I like that for a couple reasons. First of all, it's, it's less weird. You know, people park in the little parking lot and then they come into an actual little shop and it's less odd that there's like a house attached to it. Um, but the real reason that I love that is because it allowed me to hire my first like I don't even want to say employee, but almost like subcontractor. I hired my first helper this year, and she is a high schooler who comes and cleans my shop. So having that private entrance, um, I think makes her feel comfortable. It makes me feel comfortable. I have a key code on the door, so she can just kind of come and go as she wants. She comes on Monday afternoons after school. And like sometimes that's earlier. Sometimes she has like a club, so she's a little bit later. But having that private entrance is awesome because I don't have to be there. And also if... I am there or my husband is there it's like I don't feel like I have to go out and talk to her or make small talk like I know people hire people to come and clean their in home like their basement for example that would be weirder because she'd be coming through my house if I was home I'd have to like make sure I you know was decent like not like I'm walking around naked but you know like if you just got out of the shower and you have a towel on your head and no makeup and your daughter is you know a mess and you're eating breakfast like I like not having to worry about her coming and going inside my home. She can come and go in the shop. So that has been really nice. And the private entrance was really kind of the whole reason that we moved in the first place. Because it really was like it's self-contained little little shop. And I love it. Um, the other thing that has happened, this is, this is a bit of a reach. But because I had the shop, then I hired my cleaning girl, which forced me to have better systems and I don't think that that would have happened had I not moved out of my home because I was doing everything the systems were all broken because I knew them but they weren't perfect but that was fine having someone else come into my space to clean I really needed to be way more on top of my systems the biggest of which is my inventory so having the space to have all of my balloons up on shelves visible having bins to store my back stock really getting an inventory system in place was like a very unintentional um, you know side product of having a designated balloon space because like again I was utilizing my basement so I didn't really want it to look like a balloon storage warehouse now I'm totally okay with that like I'm I'm fine with racks of balloons because that's what the space is for I'm not trying to like also make it a guest room or like also make it a TV room like it, it is what it is it is a designated balloon shop and that has been awesome in terms of allowing it to function the way that it really needs to um, so yeah, that is the shop. All in all, would I do it again? Yes, because our house sold for a lot of money and this weird house shop combo was way less money. So the, the biggest factor for me has been financially what it has done for my family as a whole. Like it was a good move with or without the balloon shop. Like it was a financially beneficial move. However, I don't like the shop itself has not, I guess like, changed my business much. I offer those pickups, but other than that, pretty much everything I'm doing in the shop, I could be doing in a home-based business, except that it would just be more annoying. And that is because like my my new shop is still attached to my house. Like it's still a home-based business. I'm not going to a warehouse. I don't have a storefront. I'm not um, like retail by any means. It's still just 
coming and going pickups. So it's almost like a bridge. Like it's not like I left home base, but it's not like I don't have a pickup spot. So I'm really in this kind of middle for me, it's like a sweet spot. It really works well for me. However, having the space by itself has not has not like changed my business. Um, it's just made things a little bit easier, more convenient. Okay, but let's move on to the van because that absolutely has changed my business. The van, way more than the shop, has changed my business, specifically how much money I'm able to earn. Like the van has made me so much money. Um, I wish I had done it. I wish I had done it longer. I waited until I had cash to buy a van in full. I wish I had financed. I wish I had gotten a van like in year two. And the reason is it is, it, it makes you sell bigger stuff. I know that sounds weird. This isn't like a magical like mindset thing. Like you literally psychologically sell bigger things when you have a bigger vehicle and you're able to set up faster. So like before, I delivered in like a SUV, like I had a Honda Element, it was like a very small SUV. So knowing that everything had to be on site, first of all, outdoor decor was almost always out of the question. Like I could not show up to an outdoor event and set up two arches. It was physically impossible. And if I did have to do that, I had to rent a U-Haul, in which case the rental price of the U-Haul made selling those items like not worth it. So I was turning down or making up excuses or selling smaller products for outdoor events all the time. Um, the other thing, like big event, big things like arches, I was selling down and I didn't really realize that. Like I was, I was trying to convince people not to book arches because they were, they were too big to fit in my car. Um, versus now I'll, convince people to buy a bigger arch or I'll convince them to have two or three arches whereas before I used to always just do columns because they could kind of fit in straight and they were only six feet tall and then I would put the toppers on in place versus an arch now I have that length I can slip a 20 foot length of PVC already wrapped in the garland I can do I can do three four of those easily and now all of a sudden I'm able to set up two arches and six columns at a corporate event in 15 minutes like it's unreal how much more you sell when you know you have the space and my argument for the longest time was like I'll just rent a U-Haul but but subconsciously you never want to rent a U-Haul it's annoying and it takes time and it costs money so you're always trying to avoid it even when you feel like you're not you are and for me more than the money the convenience like I think time is my most valuable resource like you can never get it back you can't make more of it you can't make up for it later like time is non-renewable and you have to value it so I value my time even if that is driving 10 minutes to a U-Haul place waiting 15 minutes for someone to finally come to the counter going to get the van driving it back to my house then later I have to go back and get my car that I left at the U-Haul place. Like that is time. So while yes, you could make the case that you could essentially rent a U-Haul every single weekend for the same price of owning your own van, you're just not going to. You're not gonna do that. You're gonna avoid doing that and you're going to be mad when you have to do that. So having the van sitting in my parking lot ready to go, it is the best convenience spend that I have ever made in my life. Um, and if you want more like specifics about like what I got and how much I spent, there's a whole episode about that that we will link to. I recorded it right after I bought my van. So like my whole sales purchasing process was, was super clear. Um, and that's another thing I wanted to comment on about the van. I was very concerned about like what make, what model, what year, how many miles, all the details, and you know what, it, it does not matter. It doesn't matter, ProMaster or Transit, medium roof, tall roof, like whatever. Get whatever you can get your hands on. It will improve your business so much. And it's like you magically just fill it. Like you know how much space you have and then you fill it. And I could use a bigger van, I could use a second van, and I have no intentions of getting either of those things. But like before I used to make up excuses of like, I can, I can deliver everything I need in my SUV. I don't need a van. But getting it has been the biggest game changer in my business. Other than implementing a CRM, having the van has been the thing that has made me the most money uh, for sure. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out about the van, this is why I would totally advocate getting a delivery van before you get a workspace. The van can serve as more space. Like when I fill up, when I have a big weekend, I will fill up my small studio with balloons and I'll actually load the van and it gains 
way more space. Like having a fully loaded van ready to go in the parking lot can actually like almost empty my shop. So in a sense, it's like I have way more square, square footage. And you can't do this in the summer when it's super hot. You can't leave your balloons in there for a long time. But loading the van and being able to create more space is an added bonus that I never anticipated. So like if you're working out of your home and you're thinking like, oh, I'm busting at the seams, if you get a van or a delivery vehicle first, you can fill it as you need and use that as more storage space. So that way you can have a job loaded and be working on your next job and almost free up some of your your floor space in your home. The other thing I love about the van is that I have... I've stopped um, like forgetting things and I feel like I'm using less energy because I'm not always loading it and unloading it. I leave bases in there. I leave my ladder in there 100% of the time. I have extra number foils. I have extra sandbags. I have extra just like random lengths of PVC and um, conduit in case I have to like rig something together. I just like have supplies in there so that I'm not constantly having to like load and unload my primary vehicle. Um, So I, if you can't tell, love the van. Um, But I want to talk about a few of the things that I was worried about, um, some of the things that I thought were really important. uh, But I want to take a quick break and then we will get into a few more details about the van. If you haven't checked out Having a Party Wholesale by now, what are you waiting for? They have all of the brands that we know and love as balloon professionals, and they even offer free shipping on orders over $200. So the next time you need balloons, make sure to check them out. You can click the link in the show notes and tell them that the Bright Balloon Podcast sent you. Okay, so I like to think back about before we moved and before I had my van and kind of put myself back in those shoes about thinking about some of the things that I was really scared about or hesitant. So the first thing was like, is this insane to move my family into a new home for the sake of balloons? Uh, The thing that I kind of come back to is like, we adopted a child. And I think if you do that, there's pretty much nothing else in the world that's scarier and less uh, undoable. Uh, you know, it's like you, we went through this very scary adoption process and like our process was amazing. Like nothing went wrong. Everything was clockwork, but like it's all unknown and it's all in someone else's hands. And then at the end of it, you have a child that is, it's an irreversible decision. Um, so that has kind of broken me of my, a lot of my fears, like pretty much everything else is undoable. Like you can undo things. So that was kind of how I convinced myself to move into a new home. It's like, you know what, if this is the stupidest thing I've ever done, we can just move. And I know that that sounds like a big, a big change, but it's like in the grand scheme of life, oopsies, you know, people move to the wrong house or the wrong area all the time. People move all the time. So I was like less scared about the house. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't undo it. I just think like, it, it wasn't that scary looking back. It felt really scary at the time, but now I just compare everything to adopting a baby and like nothing's that scary. Um, speaking of the van, I was also scared to buy a van. Like I think I got too in the weeds. I was too worried about like how much it was going to cost and how much the additional insurance would be and if it had too many miles and if I was going to get the right kind. Like all of that straight up doesn't matter. You'll make so much more with a van that you don't even have to worry about the insurance. You don't have to worry about all of that. Like it it's fine. Someone gave me the advice saying that you're not going to get too big of a van. And I would agree. Like, don't be conservative, get as much as you can afford, get as much space as you can find. Like you're not going to get a van and think like, Oh, I wish I had gotten the smaller one. You will fill it up so fast. Um, the other reason why I really wanted a van was to wrap. And ironically, I have not done that. Um, I delayed in wrapping my van. I don't actually think I'm going to, because I still work my day job and I actually bring my van a lot to my day job. So like if I am working nine to five and then I have a six o'clock corporate installation, if it's close to where I work, I'll bring my van, park it, and then I'll go straight to my evening job. So for me, I just don't feel comfortable driving a big wrapped, you know, pink or blue, whatever, pretty balloon vehicle to my day job and like parking it in the, in the parking lot. I just like to keep kind of my jobs separate. So I actually didn't pull the trigger on wrapping my van. I think if I ever left my day job, for sure I would do that. But right now it's just a white van and that's, it's totally fine. Everyone still knows it's me when I'm coming. It's kind of nice to actually be 
unrecognizable some of the time. Um, I don't know that I need all of that attention when I'm driving around a balloon vehicle, especially after I got my one star review for my crappy driving. Um, <laughs> There's an episode on that too if you want to listen. But um, I, I would get my van wrapped if it made sense. It just doesn't since I'm always, you know, seems like I'm always parking it at work, especially in the summer. And I just don't, I don't want to call that much attention to myself um, when I'm at my day job. So I did not end up getting it wrapped. And the other thing you might, you might remember, I'm not sure if I just told people this or if I put it in an episode, but one of the things that I said I was going to do was once once I paid off my mortgage, I was going to quit my day job. Um, moving houses, so that domino effect I was talking about, so moving from a traditional home to this weird house with a balloon shop, that freed up enough money to pay off the, remi- the remainder of our mortgage, and I did not quit my day job. So I lied. I thought for sure that when we didn't have a mortgage, I would feel confident to quit. But what I realized is that like just what I have is really good and I've struck a really good balance. So I have no intention of quitting anytime soon, Um, even though I definitely am am going through some growing pains in my day job. In my Patreon um, episodes, the book club episodes, I'm a bit more transparent about some of the frustrations there. But all in all, I do have it really good with my day job. So no intentions of quitting anytime soon. So if you're like, hey, (laughs) why haven't you done that yet? Eh, Because I changed my mind. So um, I would say that all in all, looking back, my business a year ago compared to now is unrecognizable. Um, I would have never thought that I would have done a hundred plus thousand dollars in sales. Um, I never thought I'd get there, but having the van, being able to basically turn every job into a quick drop off has just, I'm able to fly through that ceiling that I just kind of had set for myself. Like I just thought that if you're made, if you're doing a hundred thousand dollars in sales, that's like, that's real money. And I still just feel like it's totally doable. Like I still have a full-time job. I I still kind of say no to jobs I don't want to. And like that 100,000, I don't think I'm gonna have a hard time hitting it again this year just because I'm able to deliver such big stuff so quickly. Um, so yeah, that is my advice. Get a van if you haven't. If you really feel like you need a space to work out of that's not your home, don't be worried about that either. I would say just don't overthink either of those. Um, especially the van, I think if anything, it's gonna be hard to find one right now. Like there, there's really not a lot on the market. COVID has made that really difficult. Same thing with real estate. Um, but if you have to pick, pick the van. Um, the, the workshop, for me wasn't as life-changing as the van was, but I, I I think my advice to myself is don't overthink it, get what you can get, and fill it with balloons. That's, that's where the money comes from, selling balloons. Um, and if you have a bigger vehicle, you can sell more. So that is my little update. Again, if you want more specific information, I did record an entire episode about the van, like how I found it, what apps I used online, how I offered cash on, you know, sight unseen. It was like a whole thing. So that episode is out there. We'll link it. Um, and yeah, decide what you want for your business, decide how it's going to affect your business and just know that, um, pretty much everything is undoable. So if you are, if you are hesitant, um, don't worry about it. Like you can, you're not going to make a wrong decision. You're not going to make a wrong decision. And if you feel like you're busting at the seams, it's probably because you are and you need more space and you need a bigger vehicle. So I am the poster child for overthinking and I wish I hadn't. I wish I pulled the trigger earlier because everything is so comfortable right now. My business is just humming along and it is largely due to the van and a little bit because of the workshop. So um, thanks for hanging in there with me and I will see you in the next episode. Thanks for joining me in this week's episode. As usual, I try to keep it bright and light in a few minutes or less. If you wish there were more episodes, you are in luck. You can join us in our Patreon group for our monthly book club. I record weekly episodes guiding you through a different self-development book each month. For as little as $3 a month, you can join more than 50 other balloon business owners in our private group. Click the link in the show notes to join us. So many of you have reached out and told me how the podcast has changed your business, and I love hearing those stories, but you might be ready to take things to the next level. 
If that's you, you should check out the laser focused solopreneur course where I walk you through more than two hours of video content showing exactly how I run my business as a solopreneur. I run a six figure balloon business. I work a full time job. I have a toddler and I produce this podcast weekly. And it's not because I'm more efficient than anybody else. It's just because I apply this laser focused framework to every decision that I make. If you're struggling with work-life balance, figuring out how to grow your business in a manageable way, and feeling like there just aren't enough hours in the day, this course is for you. Check it out using the link in the show notes.